Welcome to the Evolution of Leaders podcast. My name is Darwin Lee and I'm a coach and speaker. I'm the founder of the Evolution of Leaders. On this podcast, I'm interested in exploring the traits, behaviors, and habits that set apart elite performers through their stories and in their own words. On this episode, I interview world and Olympic sprint champion, Bruni Surin. Bruni had a fascinating sprint career at one point having the second fastest 100 meter sprint time in all of history truly one of the fastest humans in the history of running but it wasn't all straightforward as he was a medal threat in the 1996 atlanta olympics but failed to qualify for the olympic finals listen to the two simple steps he used to get over this setback just great wisdom i hope you enjoy this interview hello everyone this is darwin with the evolution of leader show where i help people and teams grow and improve my hope after listening to this podcast is that you will learn something about going to get it because my guest today is Bruni Surin, gold medalist in the 4x100 relay in the 1996 Atlanta Olympics, three world championships in the 4 100 silver in the world championships with a 9.84 at the time, the second fastest time ever recorded to date, still the 11th fastest time. Today, he takes his lessons from track into the business world. Bruni Surin, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, Darwin. I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to speaking to you and, and with, your, uh, with your audience. <laughs> oh, we're so excited to have you. Um, so starting off, I'm wondering if you can give us just a 60, 60 second overview of how you kind of look at your career. Uh, my career, I, um, I practice uh, track and field. Um, I started with the long jump and triple jump. Then I start uh, sprinting. Uh, in total, I did uh, 18 years of, uh, of uh, athletics, track and field. I participated at uh, four uh, Olympics in 88, uh, 92, 96, and 2000. I retired uh, in uh, 2002. Uh, during my career, I mean, the highlight uh, was uh, winning the gold medal and the four by one uh, hundred meters in, uh, in Atlanta in 1996. And uh, today I'm, a, I'm an uh, entrepreneur. I have a clothing line. I do a lot of uh, speaking uh, engagement and cooperation. I started uh, uh, modestly in uh, real estate a couple of years ago. And I, I, do, I just did some uh, joint uh, venture with some, uh, some uh, uh, enterprise here, here in Canada. So I'm trying to be a, a, good, uh, a good entrepreneur. <laughs> and uh, we were talking offline. It sounds like you're <laughs> off to a great start. So that's, that's great to hear. Thank you. You have a book, uh, Le Lion Tranquille, and the, the, the Tranquil Lion in, in English. And there's a great story if we can start off when you were just a, just a little guy at five and yes. how you might have saved your mother's life. I'm wondering if you can take us through that. The, the Olympic champion showing his, his true uh, championship uh, colors at five. Yes, uh, th th that tell you that I have a good good reaction. So, you know, for when you sprint, you go, you need yes. to have a good uh, <laughs> good reaction every time. Absolutely, I remember perfectly like it was yesterday at five years old. I mean, you know, I was uh, I was I was born in uh, in eighty uh, till seven seven years old. I moved to uh, to Canada, but at five years old, and uh, uh, back then uh, I don't know how it is now because I never be been back, unfortunately. But the street, you don't have kind of there's no line and, and people kind of driving like a little bit like like this you know and i remember i was uh, i was just walking uh with my mom and i saw this car just coming at us yeah. and my mom wasn't wasn't paying attention yeah. so it's me who just took my mom and just just uh put her uh put her aside uh to avoid that uh, that uh, accident so that that could have been uh fatal you know and after that i was oh man you know i was so proud i saved my mom life and everything so when we got home and, uh, and I told her, wait uh, till all the family is here to, uh, to share that story. Because I, want, I, wanted, <laughs> I wanted everybody to, yeah, to, yeah. to, uh, to hear yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, when she said that to the family and everything, and I was, uh, I was very proud, you know? <laughs> and and yeah. you write in your book, it's, it's kind of the, the first time you see real pride in your mother's eyes, which is yes. an amazing moment. Yes, it was. Uh, it was. Yeah. I mean, my mom, unfortunately, today she, 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 passed, she passed like four years ago. But uh, yeah, she was, uh, she was uh, very proud of me. I was very proud of her, uh, her too. Uh, proud of the, the education also she, uh, she, uh, she gave me. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of that. Yeah. 
and and we'll talk about family in just a moment because mm -hmm. clearly family is a very foundational thing for you yes. and um but i wanted to talk about uh something you know kind of something that interesting that happens through your career in a couple instances you have people who notice something about you and notice that you have great potential. One of them is Daniel Saint-Hilaire. Saint and he notices that you can be something great in, he's amazed at how you jump. And he's, he's kind of a very uh, influential figure in, in your development as an athlete. And I was wondering if you could tell us now that you've, you've, you're beyond your athletic career, but looking back with the benefit of experience and wisdom, what do you think he saw? You know, for those of us that are looking in potential in others, I'm thinking we might be able to learn something from this. Yes, uh, I remember uh, perfectly. I was uh, uh, 13, uh, almost 13 years old. Um, and what happened is every end uh, of uh, school year, we have this competition we call regional. Uh, regional is like a different school and, uh, di uh, and this area. And we go to the sports complex and we make a uh, competition and athletics. We call it like a kind of uh, the small Olympic for, for the student and everything. And I remember the first year I won the triple jump. I wasn't the, the fastest. I was maybe the third or fourth fastest in my, uh, in my uh, uh, um, age range. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So after that competition, uh, the coach came to me and uh, he saw something and he was like, oh, Bruni, he was uh, coaching, the, uh, he was on the national team. He gave yeah. me his business card. He said, I want to coach you. Uh, you have good potential. Here is my card. Uh, call me. So the thing is, back then, uh, my sport was basketball. So yeah. I, didn't, I didn't really like uh, i didn't have no passion for for athletics for track but that coach every year he insisted he came every year to the regional and every time he gave me his number i want to coach you i want to coach you i want to. i didn't i didn't have anything because i was still thinking about the basketball mm -hmm. so it's only years after that i saw on uh, television um carl lewis yeah carl lewis for people who, who doesn't know him at that Olympic, he won four gold medal. So at that time, I had something like a reference. And it's only back then I started uh, athletics. And the, the, the major thing about Daniel, the coach, it's how he gave me the message. It's not only, okay, well, you can be good in everything. He said, okay, well, believe in yourself because there's something in you. Uh, you can be like you, you hide all because I see the potential in you. And I started to believe that. And it made me believe that so much. Then I start saying to people, well, I'm going to be like Carl Lewis. Oh. Because he gave me that confidence. He, 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 he told me stuff. He told me about how to condition my brain at 17 years old. At first, I was like, what is he talking about? Condition my brain and everything. So at one point I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try to visualize. Uh, today we talk about visualization. Visualization to me, it's not, I don't want to say that it's easy, but how you do it? It's like, okay, well, maybe after one training, I can see myself, like close my eyes, that's my way of visualization and see myself running and of course the first time i'm not going to see myself beating uh, carl lewis or running faster than carl lewis but more and more as i'm going to do that exercise and of course i have my training physically also more and more you're doing that you're going to have reaction you're going to have a sense of oh my god i see myself running faster than carl lewis and everything and I say that to people. And one day I'm going to be an Olympian. One day I'm going to be one of the fastest guys. I want to run faster than Carl Lewis. And I say that with confidence. But people didn't believe that. And that's the problem with a lot of time and a lot of events. Sometimes we can believe in something that we can do. But sometimes we, we are focused too much on what people gonna say 
people gonna say that I'm crazy. People gonna say that I'm, 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 I'm dreaming. People gonna say, be realistic. And then unfortunately, a lot of time we say, well, they are right. I'm, I'm exaggerating. Oh, yeah. there's no way I can be faster than Carlos. There's no way I can be one of the fastest guy. And I'm gonna retire, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna stop because it's gonna to be too difficult. That's the danger. Keep believing yourself. And I could, I could tell you when I say that to people, I would say 99%, 99% of the people were saying it's impossible. But I have my first coach say that you can do it. And he gave me that quote that I want to share with you, with you, with your audience. Please. It's very simple. He, gave, he told me something, condition your brain. And really, I'm going to give you a gift. He said, the me I see is the me I'll be. And that's a quote I'm still using today. The me I see is the me I'll be. The road is not going to be easy, but it took me 15 years, 15 years of deception, 15 years of a lot of time humiliation, 15 years of a lot of people were laughing at me. It's okay. But at the end of the day, 15 years later, like you said in your introduction, 9.84 and the 100 meters at the age of 32 years old. And at that time, I was the second fastest of all time. But people were saying that it's not, it's not possible. So you make this decision. And it, it, anything that you're going to do, you have to go after it. Go for it. Go get it. You know what? It's, it's very obvious why you wrote a book and I, <laughs> and I'd encourage uh, uh, anyone to, anyone to read it. Uh, it, it. It's in French, but there's great translation tools now. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of lessons there. Another interesting lesson about we're talking about, uh, you know, belief is that you were told the long jump record. It was 8.90. You were told it was 9.33. Yeah so that you would have a belief that when you were jumping eight meters, it wasn't far enough and that you had to reach further and jump further, which I thought was an amazing coaching tool, um, kind yeah. of like a retraining and reframing the brain. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's a, another lesson from, uh, from Danielle. Yeah. Because take it, take it back this way. I'm going to, I'm going to talk, well, I'm going to talk first, uh, first of all about, about this one. Like Danielle was saying that, Believe it, believe it, believe it. You can make your brain believe anything. It's up to you, you know? As when I started, I didn't know about the world record and this and that and the long jump. What's a record? I don't know, I just started track. I don't know, I just love the long jump. My idol is uh, Carl Lewis and everything, whatever. So he told me, oh yeah, the world record, it's 9.33. And I'm like, okay, 9.33. And I, I believe that. I say, well, okay, you know. And now it's only later I have some friends who are who are the more experienced than me. Yeah. And we start talking about you know the, the the performance and this and that. And one of my friends said, no, are you crazy? The world record is not nine thirty three. You crazy? The world record is nine. At at that time it was eight ninety zero. Yeah. But even from eight nine zero to nine thirty three, it's like it's 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 crazy. Even Big still difference. today, the, the world record is not nine thirty three; it's eight ninety five. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But when I when I when I found out that, I was mad at my coach, who told me that the re record was nine thirty three. You were mad. I was mad because they, they were laughing at me because yeah. I didn't know the the record. Yeah. And he said, "Well, I'm trying to put your level, your brain, your level of confidence." right there see yourself mm -hmm. go further to give you an example today the world record of the 100 meters it's 9.58 uh, you know if back then 90, 1996 when we won our gold medal we were on top of the world there was a big article and the sport illustrated they were talking about the human excellence, how far the human gonna go and sport and everything. And I remember clearly, they were saying the human, the human won't run as fast as 
before at least 2050. I read that, I started laughing. I said, why can't somebody run that before? I mean, you just need to have the tools and everything, believe in yourself and, and do it. Mm-hmm. And I believe back then that yes, somebody can run uh, 9.6. Even when I retired at uh, 35 years old, back in 2002, I said, and I said that on TV, openly, I said, now the next generation, they're going to run 9.6. I believe that because from what I learned and track, like the biomechanic change, we are more efficient. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, the first time I saw the the person who who has the the, the world record now, Jamaican Usain Bolt, first time I saw him, I saw something in him. I saw the way he was running. I said on TV, I give this kid five years. I see that to myself. I evaluate him. He's going to run 9.6. Maybe 95% of the people, some friends were saying that Bruni, Bruni is local. <laughs> what is he talking about? He's saying that on TV. He's saying anything. Oh, how can he run 9.6? He's crazy. You can call me crazy. It's not a problem. But 2003 to 2008, that's five years, right? Yeah. I am invited at the Olympics and I am fourth row from the start, even before the competition. You see that the leadership, the confidence that he has? Yes. Yes. He said before the race, I am going to run 9.6 with confidence. Yeah. A lot of people were laughing at him. A lot of people were saying, oh, come on now. Yeah, you're crazy. 9.6? Nah. He came in the final. Boom. 9.6. Everybody yeah. was like, wow. But I saw that. So it's, it's only how, how you believe in yourself. It's very simple. You know? One of the things that was a turning point in your career, and you'd had good coaching throughout, and you're very clear about that in your book, that you'd had a number of very good coaches. Mm -hmm. But someone named Dan Pfaff is someone that really helped you turn around. Mm -hmm. And he works with you over a short period. And you see incredible gains uh, very quickly in your mid, um, in your early 30s. This is after you've been running a number of years. And so... When, when you look back, what are some of the positive traits that a good coach brings? Good traits is, uh, first of all, uh, your kind of, of leadership, your kind of how you're going to communicate. And also, do you believe at 100% on what you're saying? Because a lot of time, you the way you're going to say, uh, give you, uh, your guidance and everything. I don't want to say give you orders, but the person is going to see, you see, when you, we're talking about the, 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 the language, the body language, it's talk. The first time, first training, first training that Dan Paff saw me, he came to me with confidence. He said, you suck. I was like, what do you mean I'm stuck? I mean, I'm Olympic champion. I'm world champion many times and everything. He You're said, running sub 10 already. I'm running sub 10 already and everything. I, I'm like, no, this, is, this isn't this is it. You're not efficient. This is how you need to run. The first 10 meters, you stay low up to 30 meters. Stay low, stay low, stay low. And he said, don't worry. Even when you do that, if you see some your competition like ahead of you, don't panic. Stay low. Once you're gonna get the 30 meters, you're gonna make, you, we call that the transition. You're gonna see you, you're moving so fast, you're gonna catch them. You're gonna run 9.8. I had the, the Canadian Championship five weeks after that. I said, believe in that, in five weeks, you're gonna run 9.89. He had so much confidence. I'm like, oh my God. And don't forget, I've been running the, like a certain way for like maybe 10 years. Yeah. 
And then one day, the coach said, don't do that anymore. Don't run like that anymore. This is how I want you to run. First practice, I'm like, okay, coach, I'm going to trust you. Because the way you're talking to me, the confidence that you have in yourself, and the outcome, you say that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach, I'm going to do it. And I start to run like that. And guess what? With confidence, five weeks, exactly what the coach told me. I won the Canadian championship or national championship. First time I ran 9.8, I ran 9.89. And then the year after that, that's the year I, I had my dream season. I ran six times on the 10 second, and I became the second fastest man in the world for, of all time. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, it, it is crazy. And there's a number of very interesting stories uh, that yeah. I'm just going to go up. This is just a partial list yeah. um, b because you really showed commitment and the ability to overcome it. This is just a small list. So yeah. <laughs> in Italy, you had to overcome, there was corrupt judging where you, you were called for long jump fouls and there weren't, it was, it led to a scandal. Yeah. Um, you slept in a train station overnight in Rome because they forgot to pick you up. Yeah. At uh, one point, your Sport Canada check is late coming in and you run out of groceries, uh, you and yep. uh, your, your wife from uh, BNL. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, li you're living in a small apartment and you're embarrassed at one point to have a dream of becoming one of the best sprinters in the world. A at one point, uh, you're called a chicken. And this is publicly by a journalist. Yep. Uh, you're accused of taking steroids. Uh, this yep. is after the Ben Johnson, that whole scandal. Mm. How do you handle taking criticism and overcoming that and even turning it into a positive, like, and, and you, you, yeah. you had to overcome so much. It's, um, yes, and um, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's, it is very, very tough. It is yeah. very, very difficult. Can you remember, remember at, at young age, I'm just starting and everything, and you see your name and the paper say that they call you like a tourist, the, and directly, you, they put your name in the paper saying that, oh, you, you might take drugs also and everything. And oh my God, I, it was like one after another, one after another. But one thing I did, I just look at, like, like the image was like, I, I just look at in the sky, say that, okay, well, my goal is right there. And no matter what, people gonna hit me, people gonna laugh at me, people, I don't have money. I'm, I'm, it, I'm like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, sometimes we see, okay, we hit this and that. At some point, yes, I said to myself, oh my God, this is going to be tough. I remember when I, when I start uh, living in, uh, in Europe, when I start my season, and some nights I was just crying by myself. I'm like, man, this is not going to be easy, but I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit. And, and at the end of the day, you look at the big picture when you when you achieve that yeah. you let oh my god this is what when we call a uh, uh like perseverance perseverance that's 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 it the high price of that it's it's perseverance today i've been retired for 18 years now 18 years yeah and Everywhere I go in, in Canada, giving uh, speaking engagement, conference and everything. I mean, yeah. the, the Olympic was like 24 years ago and people still remember that. People still shaking my hands. Well, congrats and everything. And I'm like, oh my God, this is great. And now more, more, more especially when I'm talking to the younger generation, I go to school and try to inspire the student. That's I awesome. go in cooperation. I try to inspire like the, the, the employees and everything. And, and a lot of time, a lot of people have the same story as me and they can relate. I mean, life, life is not easy. I mean, if, if you are waiting back home to say that, okay, things going to come to you just like that, people are going to give you a gift, it's not going to happen. I mean, a lot of time I, 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 I was tired. I didn't want to go to practice. Oh, my God, every day. Oh, oh. But well, if I don't do it, there's no reward. It's like the same, same thing in, in, in your daily life. I mean, if you don't put in the effort, my coach used to say, every time you go to practice, it's like putting money in the bank. 
you put money in the bank. You put money in the bank, you're gonna have interest and gonna have the high reward. But if you don't put that money, don't expect to have uh, big money in your bank account. I'm like, yeah, you're right, coach. And that's, that's the same thing in, in anything. I mean, today, yes. Today, sometimes people say, yeah, but, well, Bruni, sometimes you say, when people tell you no, uh, you say, yeah, people tell me no today. And when I have a no, what's going to happen? It's okay. I'm going to see another one. And I'm going to have a yes. It's the same thing. Sometimes I hit the wall in business. Okay. I put a, I put a step back. Why did I, I hit the wall? And where's the adjustment I'm going to make? I'm going to cross that wall for sure. That's my, my mindset, mindset. And I'm going to succeed. It's, 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 it's as simple. But one thing that can help people, I'm telling you, it's visualization. See yourself doing it. You hit the wall. It's okay. Uh, what's, what's your adjustment? And how are you going you gonna to cross that, uh, that barrier? Every, everybody can do it. But sometimes we're like, oh, it's too difficult. Yeah, so what? Go, go. And that's the same mindset I'm, I'm, I'm putting my, my daughters. If I may, I can, I'm going to give you an example. My daughter, I have one daughter who, who does track and field. She's mm -hmm. running the 400 meters. I remember a couple of years ago, her goal in one competition, we call it the, the, the Canada Games, was to finish top six in the competition. I knew it was going to be tough because I, I see the competition, the, her experience and everything. I'm like, okay, it's going to be tough, but it's your, it's your goal, you know? I remember at once, her coach couldn't come and practice. So I went with her and practice. And her training, I'm like, okay, yeah, it's, it's going to be tough after the third, third round. She's going to start complaining because it's going to be tough. Effectively, after the third, she has five runs. After the third one, she said, Dad, I'm tired. I'm going to stop. I said, you have three minutes rest. Then you have your fourth one and you have a fifth one. She said, no, Dad, I'm tired. It's too tough. I said, three minutes rest. Okay, it's time to go. Oh, my God. She's mad. She's mad at me because I'm forcing her. It yeah. wasn't my goal. It was her goal. I'm trying to help you. Mm -hmm. After the fourth one, she's, she lay down on the floor, said, Dad, it's impossible. I'm tired. I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. I said, you have three minutes. Oh, my God. Three minutes. Let's go. Oh, my God. I'm too tired. I'm too tired. Okay, you know what? I'm going to give you an extra 30 seconds, but you're going to finish your training. Yeah. Oh my gosh, she was, for two days after that, she did her fifth one. For two days, she didn't talk to me. She was mad. So it's okay. But guess what? Once she got onto the competition, the Canada Games, yeah. not only she did the top six, she finished third. Yeah. She got a bronze medal. Ah, happy. Oh, thank you, daddy. Thank you, daddy. La, la, la. <laughs> you see? You that. have to put the effort. I mean, today, I have some people who are saying that, Bruni, sometimes, you know, you're a little bit tough on the kids, you know. I'm like, what? If I see a talent in anything, sports, school, business, whatever, and I see that person maybe miss um, confidence or you don't, you know, put the work ethic enough if I want to help you what I'm going to do I'm going to say okay yeah, it's fine or I'm going to tell you hey listen you need to you need to push to be honest with myself I'm going to tell you hey listen you need to work harder listen work here and everything and that's exactly what I'm doing sometimes oh yeah it's too tough but life is tough life is tough nobody's yeah. giving me a gift nobody's giving me a gift I have to go get it you know? you're and is, is speaking of that you're very open about something um and that is at the atlanta olympics when uh, this is straight from your book you said you were paralyzed by pressure and you, and you didn't have a good um, personal like a solo races in in the 100 meter yeah and you you 
tell the story that you called home to check messages after that, and both you and BNL were very upset. Yeah, I mean, I mean, at Shanta, at the, the 1996 when we won the medal, it was a very special moment. Yeah. Because I wanted to win two medals. I yeah. wanted to win the medals and the 100 meters and also the four by 100 meters. So what happened is, and the four on the 100 meters uh, semifinal, I came to the semifinal yeah. where there are two heats. And, and my first heat, I finished fifth. So when I saw that on the board, the definition, the definition of that is Bruni Surman fifth Canada. You are out yeah. of the final. Heartbreaking. I'm like, oh my God. I was ranked second in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm at the Olympics where I want to win the gold medal. I'm not even going to participate in the final. I saw like it was black. And I saw stars. I'm like, I'm like, I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. I'm not injured. Oh my God, what's going on? I saw the final on TV. I'm like, oh my God. Now my wife is there crying. My coach is there, doesn't understand. And that's what I said to people. And I learned that also from my coaches when you are in that those kind of situation and any field and the, and that happen two things happen why are you there why are you in this situation there's a reason find that reason as soon as possible uh... second thing second thing what are you going to do about it asap Two things. So I came home. I said, okay, I'm going to apply that. Why am I in this situation? Yes. At first, I'm like, okay, why, 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 why? I saw the tape, my, my uh, semifinal, about maybe 50, 100 times, trying to find the why am I here. Suddenly, boom. Ah, okay. I remember in my preparation, yeah. I was going to the sports center to practice. Yeah. And maybe at three, four occasions, I had no passion. I didn't like it. I turned around. I didn't go to practice three, four times. I'm like, okay. I didn't understand back then. So at the Olympics, in the middle of the night, I'm like, I know why I didn't like it. Because I wanted to win that medal for myself, I mean, not for myself, for my country, for my sponsors, for my friends, and my family. The only thing I was missing, I didn't do it for myself first. Mm -hmm. That was my mindset. I was like, oh my God, okay, I understand now. Second thing, what are you going to do about it, ASAP? Okay, what I'm gonna do about it, ASAP? change my mindset, I'm going to do it for me first. And I had a big smile. Yeah. Okay. I got it now. Okay, let's go. In the house, there was a pool, big backyard. I went to the pool the next day, next morning. Life is great. Oh my God, yeah. People were looking at me and asked me, Mr. Cern, are you, are you okay? Is everything okay? Oh, because they, they knew what you'd been through. They, they knew what I've been through. Okay. And they Are see you... me just laughing, Happy. smiling, life is good. I'm like, what's going on here? I find the why I'm here and what I'm going to do about it. A couple of hours later, boom, life is good. Can we all do that? Yes. But a lot of time, what happened? We don't take that step back. We're like, oh, life is not good. Life is, oh my God, I have this, all this problem. You only think, you only focus about, okay, life is good, it's not good. Problem, problem, problem. You don't ask the question, okay, why, what, what are you gonna do about it? I said, to my, I said to my friends, I said to my family, you have a problem, I'm the guy who's gonna listen to you anytime. I'm gonna understand your problem. Okay, yeah, I understand. Okay, yeah, it's tough, it's tough. 
And you know what I'm going to ask you? What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? ASAP, as soon as possible. That's really good. And, and so you, had, <laughs> you, know? you had that realization, it was that night. That night, same night. So you thought about it for quite a long time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. A couple of hours, I'm like, okay, this is where my mindset was. This is my, how my mindset is like now. And we go, we move forward. That's, that, that's it. That's uh, everybody, everybody, everybody can do that with no exception. But we have to put the time. We have to, to, to think about it. Yeah, exactly. And, and that was uh, a great moment. And uh, what, what I like to do is um, just to play it, if that's okay. Yeah, and sure. Because, because there's an incredible moment uh, <laughs> where you <laughs> pump your arms. And, and it's, it's, it's one of the greatest ones because uh, it's just so real. And you must have seen this a million times. Oh, yeah. But uh, when, when you're preparing to receive the baton, it's not at you yet. What are you, what's going through your mind? We're going to win. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's what you're thinking. Yeah. We're going to win. We're going to win. I said to myself, I mean, all the four uh, sprinters you saw there. And here you are running like, uh, a great, yeah. great quarter. Yeah. A terrific quarter. And then I'm going to pass it to Donovan Bailey. And here as it soon comes. As I pass and it, then there it is. And then, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Of course. What, yeah. what kind of feelings do you get when, 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 you, when you look at that? Oh, my God. Every time I look at that, I have, I have goosebumps uh, because I know what's behind it. What's behind this is was, okay, well, we were not the favorite. Yeah, that's right. And all the media were talking about our opponent the, because it was big competition, Canada, USA, and everything. That's and a great embrace with you and Donovan. Yeah, Bailey. everybody yeah. was just focused on USA, like they're going to they're gonna kill us, they're going to win easily and stuff like that. And we were like, okay, keep underestimate us. It's all right. But once we get to the track, all of the four guys, we look at, and, and here, it's talk. You can see the confidence of people like right here. People, sometimes people don't, don't even have to talk. You can just watch here. You see a degree of confidence. And I look at everybody and I'm like, this is it. Nobody believes that, but we believe that we're going we're gonna to do it. And that, that's, that's the mindset that we have before going there because sometimes we see our competition we're like oh they are too good they are too good and when i do my my uh, my conference and i said to myself a lot of time we look at they they why not us if they are there what sometimes we have to do like benchmark we call say well, okay how how did they do to get there okay but we're gonna do better why not but sometimes it's like, oh my God, they are untouchable. Same thing as me when I was looking at the, the Olympics and my idol, and he was like, everybody was like, oh, little Bruni, wow, no, you cannot touch him. You cannot run as fast. You cannot be Olympian. You cannot win medal. Wow. And my mindset was like, hmm, if they can do it, I have certain talent. And my coach told me, and I believe I'm my coach, my leader, and yes, I'm going to do it. And I remember also my mom at 17, at seven years old when I came to Canada. And she was saying to myself, well, we have all the opportunity here. Whatever you want to do, just go for it. Believe in yourself, perseverance, and also something in life, there's no shortcut. That means whatever you're going to do, don't cheat. Do it like naturally for you. Don't cheat in anything you're going to do because sooner or later you're going to pay the price. And that's the kind of mind, mindset that started at seven, seven years old. And then my first coach, Daniel, uh, the me I see is the me I'll be. I'm like, okay, my God, whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to succeed. Boom. That's it. It's, it's as, as simple as that, you know? And sometimes you have to surround yourself with positive people. I don't surround myself with negative people. Sometimes I have friends and they say, hey, hey, hey listen, be positive. Hey, listen, I don't talk behind bad people and everything. I don't want all the negativity. I wake up in the morning, I say to myself, I'm going to have a great day. The other day, somebody in my complex told me, ah, oh, Mr. Sharon, it's, it's, it's very nice to see you. I'm like, okay, well, well, what are you talking about? You see, you are always in a good mood. 
you you are inspiring me. I'm like, ah, okay. <laughs> and I said to myself, what life to me, life is too short to focus on the on the negativity. Life is too short for that. I mean, be positive, be be happy and everything. I'm not saying that all the time things are gonna be great and everything, but hey, think about it. Today we are we are we are in this pandemic. Yes. Right? Before the pandemic, I had like maybe 15, around 15 conferences, like across Canada. I have some in the, in the state and everything. I have the, this income coming in and everything. I have my yep. clothing. Yep. And my God, okay, everybody's panicking. Okay, focus on, oh my God, my God. At first, yes, we are living it. It's tough. It's tough for me too. So now what we're going to do? Okay, well, we are living that. It's going to be tough. Okay, focus. Okay, now during the pandemic, what we can do? I say, okay, well, I'm going to cheer up. And I'm like, oh my God, listen, it's good. I'm with my family all the day, all the time. We have now, we have breakfast, we have lunch together, we have dinner together, we are more close. This is positive. This is great. Okay, now, more and more, we're going to go digital. I know a little bit about digital. Okay, I want to know more about digital. I took a university class about digital marketing. Mm-hmm. Keeping busy, positive. No, no, no. I took another course about negotiation. I'm like, yes. Now I'm preparing for the after COVID. I hope it's gonna be very soon. <laughs> it's, we're still there. But you see, I could have said, oh my God, every day, I'm losing money. I'm losing money. Uh, my clothes, the store are closed. All oh, my conferences. Oh my God, everything is canceled. Oh my God, I'm depressed. Oh my God, no, no, no. I could have done that. Yeah. But, you know, unfortunately, I don't want to judge people. I mean, that's why I said to my, my friend, I, I even said something on the, on the media. I said, well, people who, who want to chat, whatever, that's something I was doing, some uh, webinar, try to cheer people out to your mindset, keeping busy and, you know, don't go in that, that negative, negative, because that's the danger uh, just about, you know, depression. And... I don't like to talk about, you know, suicide. We're not there to talk about suicide or anything, but unfortunately, it's there. I mean, it's, it's, it's bad. And uh, that's something that I'm going to do also. I'm going to write about it, and I'm going to say to people, if you want to talk, I'm here. Now, there's a lot of people who has help for the government and everything. So it's not that bad. It's bad, but it's not that bad because they have the, this help. But one day, this help from the government, it's going to end. Now, what's going to happen? Yeah, that's right. You know, so we have to be careful. Yeah. It's, and, and thank you for the insights to today. It's amazing, you know, at, at the time, your life is around athletics, uh, your family also, but you know, it, mm-hmm. in that moment, it's around athletics. And you made a choice, really, to be positive. Once you came out of that, then you had a great experience and, and you were able to help the team. So I think that's um, really admirable and, and, and good for you. Um, as we move forward to the world championships, uh, you got faster on, under Dan um, Pfaff and you ran um, probably the greatest race of your life. And uh, I'm wondering if you can tell us that because there's something interesting there, although um, you got second and second's amazing on a silver medal, um, yeah. but you clocked a time that was phenomenal and it really put into context for you, your goals, um, and especially with, with Carl Lewis, your idol. And I'm wondering if, if you can take us through that. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's, it's quite amazing. Yeah. I mean, uh, when I saw that was back in, uh, 1999, just to tell you how strong is when you're talking about, uh, working, uh, psychologically so hard yeah. and when you're going to do it, when I did it physically, right there and when i finished the race i mean that's the time i was a little bit ahead of uh, uh my opponent yeah yeah was green and we finished mm-hmm. tight photo finish yeah very good work. Over. terrific race yeah yeah <laughs> that, that was a good competition very very good Absolutely. show yeah and and just to show you when i finished that race and i look at the the, the board the, the the dashboard and see morris green one and 980 and me uh, Bruni, Southern Canada, 984. At that time, I was like, okay, man, it's great. But 
physically, that was, obviously that was the first time I ran 984, but I run it so much, so many times here, when I did it physically, it's a feeling of deja vu. Ah. And I'm like, okay, okay. To me, it's like, it's normal. Yeah. But it took me, it took me two hours to realize what 984 meant, and especially what it meant for me. Because all the medalists, the top three, automatically we have uh, we had drug test to see, okay, well, people cheat, whatever. So after two hours after that, I'm waiting in line. I'm waiting for my turn because we had the, all the interview and the, the medal ceremony and everything. And I just sit down there and my wife was just there. And I, 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 I asked her, I said, listen, I, I really run 984. Yes. And she was confused. She was like, yeah, yeah, you run that two hours ago. You know, what's wrong with you? you know? And suddenly I had a kind of a, a movie in my mind. The movie started like 17 years old, like a young kid with no money. And uh, I saw my idol. And I'm like, okay, I want to become like him. I want to be faster than him and everything. And I saw myself saying to people, and I saw all these faces, faces laughing at me, blah, blah, blah. You're not, you, you cannot do it, blah, blah, blah. And the movie finished by my coach, Daniel, that shared that thing with me. The me I see is the me I'll be. I realized at 32 years old, my time was faster than my idol, Carl Lewis. And my, I was sitting just like that and my, all my body just started shaking. I was, I was yeah. just like this. I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is crazy. This is crazy. And the thing is, I was more happier yeah. than Maurice. Who won the race? He yes, won the race. Yes, I came yes. second. I was more happy because that was my goal. So a lot of time I said to people also, you all have your personal goal. Yes, sometimes we, we try to compare and everything, stuff like that. And yes, I'm aware sometimes people say, okay, second is not first. Yeah, but second is not first. But I felt that I was even more than first. I mean, that was like, that was a, a race that to me, that's that, that, change my life because yeah. the way I'm thinking now is like even if 99% of people were saying that it's impossible and this and that and only one person or a couple of small people were saying okay yeah we're with you and I'm like this is what we, what we can do so that's the mindset today I'm still using to say okay whatever I want to do that we're going to build and everything we're going to succeed and today I'm looking at my life you see, like, like sharing my Absolutely. story with yeah. people. I have my clothing line and everything. Today, it's like a, a dream, a dream life, a dream life. And especially when, I, when I'm sharing uh, with people, especially when people are writing me emails saying, okay, well, I, I, I was in your conference and from now on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for my goals and everything. To me, it's like a, a, a big, big, big uh, reward. I mean, that's, that's, that's crazy. You know? Yeah. <laughs> that, that is fantastic. And, and we could listen to you uh, all day. Um, but, um, and I flashed up your website as we were talking there and you, and you're uh, an entrepreneur you. and businessman and, and uh, business coach and, and you do great work there. Um, so I'll just wrap up here, but stay with me on the line here. So Bruni, this has been such a pleasure. We wish you uh, all the best on your journey as an entrepreneur and a speaker and a business coach and an athlete. Uh, really, this, is, this has been so great uh, listening to your insights. Thank you very much. And I want to congratulate you also, Darwin. You were, you were well prepared and the, 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 the webinar went very smooth. Congratulations. I really enjoy it. <laughs> that, that means a lot to me. Thank you so much, Mr. Bruni. <laughs> Thank Bruni, you very sir. much. Hey, yeah, guys. Thank you all so much for listening and watching. If you want to learn more about this topic or others, go to my website, evolutionofleaders.com. Make sure you get 1% better today and tune in again on a future episode of the Evolution of Leaders. Thank you for listening.
Uh, I hope you enjoyed this interview. What struck me is Bruni's amazing ability to overcome criticism and keep his Olympic dream alive. I was really struck by how he'd been through so much adversity, being called a tourist and a chicken by journalists, but he never lets go of his dream. It's just incredible perseverance. And remember, when things go bad, ask yourself two questions. Number one, why? Number two, what are you going to do about it? ASAP. And you can see the passion in the man when he says that. And it's just, he feels it so deeply, so great. I am a leadership and career coach. Go to my website if you'd like to touch base. I would love to hear from you, evolutionofleaders.com. Please like and share if you enjoyed this. Thank you for listening and watching.